Good afternoon, everybody. Let's victory here with an edition of Puck You, hosted by myself, featuring myself, asking myself questions today. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Let's victory here, and we are going to get right in and with a little recap from last night. All right, the Toronto Maple Leafs have made a series of it. Congratulations. Everybody knows how much I shit on Toronto for a lot of good reasons, first of all, for the most part. But hang on. I have to give the Toronto Maple Leafs a whole shitload of credit. All right. One of the hardest things to do in sports is to come back and win a series from being down 3-1 in a best of seven. They haven't done it yet, but they've taken small steps to get there, right? Not only have they got there, they've done it without their best player, Austin Matthews, who has been ill, which I'm calling bullshit. I think he's hurt. I think he's physically incapable of playing. I don't think he's sick at all. I think he's got a lingering injury that's been creeping up on him and it is hasn't been able to put him at 100%. So they've decided to leave him off, off the lineup. Now, with that being said, Game 7 is tomorrow. Are we going to see Austin Matthews? And now, here's the thing. If you're the Toronto Maple Leafs coaching staff, trainers, medical team the fucking whole enchilada. At what point do you put Matthews in the lineup? 80% healthy? 50% healthy? How do you make that choice? Especially because I haven't seen Toronto play this well all season. And I don't mean that by a put up, you know, five, six goals. Matthew gets a hat trick. Marner gets four points. I don't mean that kind of play. I mean playoff hockey play. Winning battles, winning the blue lines, winning face-offs. Domi has been excellent in face-offs. And these are the little details in playoffs that make a fucking difference. It makes the difference between hitting the golf course or make moving on to the next round. The funny part is, is, you know, I listen to a lot of radios and the professionals, the experts analyze. And everyone's like, oh, I can't believe this game is going to game seven. You know, I predicted it was going to go to game seven uh, when the postseason started, but I can't believe it's going to get. Man, shut up. Like so many of these guys are out there saying that they can't believe it's gone to seven. You know, after being up through, you said it was going to go to seven as your playoff pre predictions. The thing with going to seven is sometimes it gets there different ways. Three one to three three gets you to seven. Two two to three two to three three gets you to seven. It doesn't fucking matter. A lot of people, a lot of us expected. This series to go to seven, including myself. I said six, six or seven. Uh, I expected a different kind of series. I actually expected more goal scoring, more special teams. And it's been just the opposite. So if we're looking for free bets for tomorrow, I mean, game seven, I got to look it up. I got to look up the results of, of past game sevens, but the under could be a good bet. You know, how devastating is that for Justin Wool to play a near perfect game and you lose your shutout with 0.1 seconds? Does that mean anything to him? No, no, it doesn't. But at the same time, I feel bad for the guy because even though Boston's scoring chances weren't anything electric, I thought Wool made three to five big saves. The rest were kind of routine shots from the outside, no traffic. You know, he didn't have to be spectacular. 
but he needed to be good. And that's exactly what it was. And I give all the credit to him. And if it was up to me, and I said this before, I think Wool should have started game four. And this might be a different series. The, the Leafs might have already won this series by then. Anyway, we can't speculate the past. doesn't fucking matter. Moving on. Uh, you know, I, I, I still give them respect for a lot of the third lines and fourth liners stepping up. To win a playoff series, you need 20 guys going. Not 12, not 6. You need 20 guys going, buying into the system and the game plan that's at hand because every team plays a little different, right? So I think Sheldon Keefe has done a great job the past three games moving guys around to get the best result. And I think they've done an excellent job. So I really have to give Toronto credit for not packing their shit, for not giving up. No Austin Matthews. Like, that's a lot of adversity. No Austin Matthews. The guy scores 69 goals in the regular season, right? Obviously, something happened, whether it was in game 82 or 81 or game one of the playoffs. Something happened. And this is what playoffs is about. It's about conquering adversity. If you think you're going to go play and win 16 games in the playoffs unscathed with no adversity, it's never going to happen. Look at Vegas last year. They went through three goalies to earn their championship. Vancouver right now, three goalies. You know, and they're they're fighting for their life in what is arguably the most boring series in the fucking world. My God, I would rather watch minor hockey playdowns than that series. It's just, it's so, oh, it's just not, it's not a good series for fans and hockey guys. You know, especially fans that don't know a lot about the game. Uh, you you want to see goals. You want to see up and down. You want to see... You know, you want to see the Vegas Dallas series is what you want to see. You know, a lot of skill, a lot of players stepping up. It just, it hasn't been that exciting of a series. Uh, You know, the amount of shots that Vancouver, they actually set a record for the least amount of shots in a playoff series over the first, I think it was five games. It was like 74. They're averaging about 19 shots a game. (laughs) And... uh, I mean, and the Preds haven't been much better as far as that goes. I, they've, been, they've been a little bit better at getting shots on. But this is Vancouver, the best team in the West. Struggling. So I'm not sure what to think about the uh, you know that series. But you know, I'm really looking forward to Game 7. The problem with this is Game 7 puts a lot of pressure on both teams because here's the thing if toronto loses oh, another first round exit at the end of the day no one gives a shit you lose in four you lose in seven you fucking lost okay put your pom-poms away that's the reality and then on the flip side you got boston if they lose two years in a row going up three one in a series to lose in seven They did it last year against Florida. They might do it again against the Leafs. What does that say for that team? And I think, and you go back on other podcasts, and we've talked about this with Bernsey, that Boston was an overrated team. I mean, they, they they, they scored well in the standings, but it felt like they weren't deep enough. You look at what they've lost over the past year. With Krejci and Bergeron, you know, those were a lot of big pieces. I think there's another guy too. I can't remember. Those are big pieces that Boston has lost. And yet they were still one of the top teams in the East after losing some of serious veteran players. I thought the Leafs are doing a great job of managing Marshawn. Which has been unfortunate for us because the past two nights we've had Marshawn on the card. 
And uh, the Leafs have been in his face. They've been giving the menace, menacing kind of attitude. And he doesn't like it. He's getting frustrated. He's taken penalties in both his last two games. And he hasn't looked himself. He hasn't had a lot of room to breathe. He hasn't had time to make Brad Marchand plays. David Pasternak, your coach, your coach just called you out after the game last night. Word for word, Pasternak needs to step up. And he's right. What Boston has been lacking is their will to win from puck drop. They have not shown up for a first period in the last three games. Toronto has completely dominated Boston in the last three games of the first period. And even halfway through the second last night, Boston had four shots up until like the 12 minute mark of the second period. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. Irregardless, we're looking forward to game seven. That's why we're hockey fans is for the game sevens. Win or lose, you're in or you're out. Who is going to do it? We're going to be all over this game tomorrow on the card. I got a lot of things that I like, and I love game sevens. But with that being said, one more final horn toot for the Toronto Maple Leafs is not only have they been able to win three in a row, they finally were able to win one at home for the first time in six or seven home games, playoff games. They have not won a game at home. Not only did they not win, sorry, not only did they win, but they have done it without a power play. Not that there's a ton of power play opportunities. I think there was three penalties in total last night. Pasternak takes a, a you know a terrible high sticking call that you can't take if you want to win. Fortunately for Boston, uh, the Leafs' power play has been terrible. So the fact that Toronto's competing five on five with a power play as dangerous as it has been in the regular season, it says a lot for that team's character. So. You know, it's almost hard not to cheer for the Leafs because everybody looks likes a good comeback story. And that's exactly what this is. You're down 3-1 against the, whatever, second best team in the East, third best team, whatever Boston was, and you come back. And now you can win it. It's exciting. That's why we love this shit. We eat it up. Just to have Florida sweep them in the next round. <laughs> okay, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not. Don't don't put me on the record for that. That's not what I truly believe. Let's get into tonight. We dropped a free pick earlier on our Instagram. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. NHL Why Lose? Wyatt Johnston for the Dallas Stars has been maybe the best Dallas Star. In the lineup in this series. He's been a menace. He's been just a point machine. I don't know how much money he has made us over the last two weeks of this series. That's our free pick today. That should be on the card. But we're giving it out as a free pick. Wyatt Johnston, anytime point. Over half a point. Dallas and Vegas, it's been a good series. Uh, I, I I think the better team is winning. I, I think Dallas is the better team. And even though they give up the first two at home and a lot of questions were raised, they seem to have made adjustments and they go ahead and win three in a row, including one on the road. And now they have the Stanley Cup champs on the ropes in what is a very big game. Game six in Vegas. Can Dallas pull it out? I'll tell you one thing. On our card tonight, 
we have a cherry picker bet. We have a max bet cherry picker bet that pays better than even money. This ain't no minus 180, 170. It's plus 100 max bet cherry picker, and it can be yours for 29 bucks. Not only did I do the cherry picker tonight, is we also added in a uh, plus 400 bacon parlay, which I am in love with. I've looked up this thing up and down, and I absolutely love it. I highly suggest if you're sitting on the sidelines and you're wondering if you should get in, it's $29 to build a bankroll. It's 29 bucks to get the card. It's a fucking absolute no-brainer why you wouldn't do it. Because here's the best thing is I put a guarantee on this card. If the cherry picker doesn't win, you get every single pick I make right up until the cup is hoisted absolutely free. It's a no-brainer. One interesting thing, I meant to bring it up earlier, but I'm sure you guys notice I don't fucking follow a script. I wing it. I speak my mind. Connor Hellebuck. If any of you heard the interview between him and the, the Winnipeg media at Locker Cleanout Day or whatever they fuck they call it in Winnipeg, There was a lot to take in with that. And I thought I liked the guy. But yeah, he's probably going to win the Vesna. He's got the best numbers. So, with, and I don't remember it word for word, but I'll, I'll do the best I can to paraphrase. So the reporter asked them, you know, what uh, what was your opinion on your play in, in the playoffs? And his answer, I thought he was joking. He said, I thought I was playing the best hockey of the season. Excuse me? I was driving to you know wherever today when I heard that, and I almost fucking jerked the truck into the ditch. I'm like, there's no way he just said that. I am playing the best hockey I have all season. You are? Bro, you haven't let in less than five goals <laughs> in every single game. What the fuck are you talking about? And then it gets better. Then he goes on to say, I can't do it on my own. Are you shitting me? I don't even know how to re respond to this interview. And there's been a lot of speculation over, over the past 24 hours of what this interview means. What kind of guy is this guy? Is this a guy that's so into himself that he can't see the reality that he fucking sucked in the playoffs? How can you possibly go and sit in front of a microphone for the world to hear and tell them that I played the best hockey of the season? And then go on and basically say it's you, your guys' fault why we lost and I can't do it all. Oh, man, if that's not a cancer in the dressing room, I don't fucking know what is. Between him and Shifley and their at his attitude, there's no fucking way this team is ever going to make a deep run in the playoffs. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that's, that, that was his answer. And then you go back a few years ago when Carey Price, uh, when they lost, and he was outstanding. And they still lost to Tampa in the finals. He put the onus on him. He literally said, you know, I, I, I take full responsibility for, for this loss. Which guy would you rather have on your team? Obviously, that's a rhetorical question. But how does Connor Hellebach get off with basically throwing his teammates under the bus 
and somehow believing that he played well. Open for interpretation. That is my interpretation. Where you like it or not, I don't care. This is what we do on Puck U. We create banter. We talk shit. But let's be honest. This isn't even talking shit. These are facts. These are facts that came out of his mouth. So now we get to interpret it. We get to digest it. We get to figure out what all that means. And as a former hockey player, I would never, ever want to hear our goalie or our best player put himself first publicly. Now, if you believe that, that's one thing. But don't fucking say that. What, what kind of image are you delivering? Anyways, I don't understand. But the Winnipeg Jets are in a world of trouble with their locker room. In my opinion, I like to fucking be a, a part of that organization and fucking straighten out some of those boys, man. It'd be Anyway, I'm not, I'm not, unfortunately, but if I was, there would be some attitude changes. It's amazing what money can do, even to the professionals. Either way, moving on. I just wanted to bring that up. I thought it was a good little, good little side piece. And... You know, I kind of lost a lot of respect for the guy. I, I liked him before, and I don't now. I, I just I feel like that's that's not a guy you wanna you wanna be a you wanna have on your team. Playoffs are heating up. Round one is winding down. The 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 games per night are getting fewer, but that does not mean we are not making money. We are still crushing the postseason. We are up a ton over the past few weeks. We are cashing parlays left, right, and center right now. It's amazing. And we got that big cherry picker tonight with the guarantee. So head on over to whylose.com to pick yours up. 29 bucks gets you the card with the guarantee that it hits or you get the season for free. It makes no fucking sense why you wouldn't do this. I say it a hundred times, but I do it for you guys. I do it for you guys. We make it affordable so you guys can get in and start printing money with us. This is what we do. We look forward to having you. Thank you for joining me. And if you have some requests, if you want to hear what I have to say about something, drop it in the comments below. And maybe on the next one, we'll talk about those things. All right. I love talking hockey. I could do it all day. I fucking love the game. I'm a big, big fan of the sport. All right. Factual, actual, real shit. This is Puck You. Thank you for joining me. I'm Les Victory. Take care.